because I don't see this really at all about politics. What's going on in Acorn right now is just about money. Well, what I would say about that, Glenn, is that really what you need to look at in terms of Acorn is governance. I mean, what we have is an organization, a venerable organization that had a very beautiful mission and a lot of committed supporters. What's happened over time, though, is that there are certain um, leaders and senior staff members that have kind of, for the most part, hijacked the organization, and they're using it for their own personal um, gains. Can you tell me about Dale Rathke and uh, his brother? Well, um, Dale Rathke, Rathke is the founder of—I um, mean, Wade Rathke is the founder of the organization, and he's an incredible organizer. And he, it, it was his vision that allowed Acorn to progress to kind of where it is today. Unfortunately, with, you know, a, you know absolute power comes some corruption. And the board members found out uh, about eight, eight or nine months ago that there had been a million-dollar embezzlement by his brother. Now, what the board did at that point in time was that when, once the full board found out about it, you know, they immediately moved to terminate Wade and Dale, and then they tried to put in place the young ladies that, um, that you interviewed on Friday, Karen and Marcel, mm -hmm. in order to try to set the record straight and get to the bottom of what happened to the money. Okay. Um, there, but there hasn't been any prosecutions. There hasn't really been. Nobody's, nobody's really investigated this million dollar, this missing million dollars. Nobody's paid for this, um, criminally speaking. Uh, that, that is correct, Lynn. And, and don't you find it very interesting that even when the, after word of a million dollar embezzlement came out, and the fact that board members and executive committee members covered up the embezzlement, that the only people that have been punished were the people that were trying to get to the bottom of where the money go. Okay. Doesn't oh. that seem strange? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's why, you know, I was told on Friday by the, the two amazing women that were here, I was told on Friday, Glenn, stop looking at this as politics. It's not politics. It's about money. Can you tell me, because uh, I'm, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to find I'm trying to find the beating heart of this, uh, this snake. This is like Hydra. You can cut acorn off, but it just sprouts another head. There are all kinds of affiliated uh, organizations. Can you tell me at all what CCI is? Well, I'm glad you asked that, Glenn. Essentially, CCI, Citizens Consulting, Inc., is basically the financial nerve center for, the, for acorn and all its entities. So if you really want to try to follow the money, that's why we requested a, f a forensic examination and a financial audit of CCI. Okay. CCI, can you put that back up on the screen, please? CCI shows one, what a surprise, it's in New Orleans. There's no corruption down there. Um, it, it shows one address. This is the address that has, that all of the other um, uh, ACORN entities they all list this as their address. So if you are, correct me if I'm wrong here, Michael, but if you're in one of these organizations and you apply for federal dollars or any kind of dollars, the money goes there. Well, Glenn, that, that, I'm glad you mentioned that. I mean, that, that's the main problem. As a matter of fact, the money goes there first. So even if you had a local chapter of ACORN that wanted to say, you know, some good philanthropist wanted to give a, write a local grant, the local ACORN chapter can't get the grant. Everything winds up being funneled through national, and all of the monies come are dispersed from CCI. I, now, CCI says that they pay a small administrative fee. Uh -huh. But the problem is, is without an audit, you know, we don't know if CCI gets 1 percent, 50 percent, 90 percent. We don't know. And that's what Karen Inman and uh, Marcel Reed were trying to, get, trying to get their hands on. I tell you, America, uh, my gut tells me we are somewhere on the path, I don't know where, but we are somewhere on the path of something very dark and sinister here. Um, I don't know who's involved, um, but I think we're on the, we're on the path of something. And um, you, you pray for people like uh, uh, Michael and the people who are still in this organization who say it's been hijacked and it was a good organization just taken awry for, for money. You pray for these people because I, I honestly fear for their safety. Michael, we will talk to you again, sir. Thank you so much. Let me go to, a, uh, let me go to Kevin Mooney now. Um, he's with the Washington Examiner. He's been helping investigate the angles on this story that the media has not reported. Um, let, me, uh, let me start here with you, Kevin. Um, it, we did a search today for the Citizens Consulting, Inc. It, it, uh, it is identified on their website just with the name and the address and the phone number, and that's it. 
we went to our brain room, which our brain room, they, they do research for us. I have my own personal researchers. We have researchers here at Fox. They can, they'll find anything. When they went to CCI, I got the report back. There isn't anything on this organization. There isn't, there's not any stories out there. There's nothing out on CCI. How is it possible? Well, how is it possible that there is some uh, so many millions of dollars could go down here and this is such an, a relative unknown? Well, th this has been explored a little bit in congressional testimony. Uh, one of the former ACORN members has submitted testimony to the effect that, uh, as your previous guest pointed out, this organization is in char essentially in charge of most, if not all, of the finances, and it deserves a lot more scrutiny than it's gotten. Um, and uh, it's interesting because any time a, a bank or a corporation wants to make a grant available to ACORN, it's not going where they say it's going. It's not going to ACORN Housing, for example. It's being funneled through this other organization. And that raises all kinds of questions about their finances, which has been alarming to no less than their, their own membership. Okay. Um, you know, the other thing, Kevin, that you've been, I talked to you on the weekend about um, coming on is this is such misdirection. When you see that it is, it's money being taken in, um, from organizations and from the federal government. It's all about getting voter registration. But this is so clear now why they're faking these registrations. They, they can fake as many as they want because they're paid per registration. And when they get on the air, they'll say, oh, well, gee, when did Donald Duck vote? They don't care because they already got their money. Then they'll throw these quote unquote rogue employees, the lowest of our society, people just getting out of prison or whatever, the lowest of our society who can't defend themselves. They just throw them to the wolves, take the money, blame it on, you know, the conservatives for bringing this up and just hating the black man or whatever it is, and they make even more money on it. Now, what people don't really know, and you've been following this, is these guys are thugs. They are doing the bidding and misdirecting the public by going out while they're covering for Fran Fannie and Freddie, they're marching in front of uh, AIG, right? Right, well, there's, there's a program they have that's actually called, they actually call it Muscle for Money. The official side of it is about voter registration, which has been in the news recently, as you know. The other side of it is a, is a corporate directed campaign to go out and, and harass uh, banks and corporations and shake them down to contribute to ACORN. Uh, it gets very personal, going to private homes, breaking up barbecues, disrupting speeches, and it's been very effective. Uh, and it's also financed by the Service Employees International Union, which, uh, which as you pointed out, is, is financially linked with ACORN. So what I'm, trying to, what I'm trying to understand here, Kevin, is it seems to me that any thinking, logical person would say, this is the brown shirt, uh, this is, the, this is the, um, the kneecap breakers. If somebody wants something done, as long as the money keeps flowing in, they'll just take care of, they'll scare anybody off. I, I mean, I've talked to employees now, we have people calling us now, and please, if you're in Acorn, we'll keep the confidence, you don't have to go on the air. Tell us where to look. There are people in ACORN now and in these organizations that are afraid to speak out because they know what kind of thug organization some of these people are running. Uh, sure. I mean, unfortunately, we, we have had a few courageous individuals from within the organization willing to step out, uh, submit testimony, and take on the organization. But it's going to take some more action from Congress. And unfortunately, the only action Congress is taking now is to provide more money for ACORN. Why? Well, I think uh, if, you, if you look over in the Democratic side of the ledger, they correctly ide identify ACORN as a potential funding source, for example, uh, get out the vote, a sort of uh, de facto party building apparatus. Uh, so they, don't, they certainly don't have a financial inducement themselves to go out and take, uh, take on ACORN, but it is about undermining our own electoral system. Why? Uh, you have more indictments coming down all the time. And these people are going to be, they're going to go door to door to take the census, which changes everything it changes where federal dollars go it changes everything and we're hiring them for the census this is insane this is suicide this is national suicide where are the good democrats that are speaking out are there any kevin anybody speaking out that is a real true hey i just want to do the right thing here well, in, on the vote that was taken last week on the Barney Frank Amendment that would uh, open up more federal dollars for ACORN, there were actually four Democrats who, who voted against that, that piece of legislation. Uh, otherwise, it was largely a party vote. Good. Thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, you know what, Grash, get the name of those uh, Democrats. Let's call their office and let's uh, also show their names for standing up and doing the right thing. All right. Last known uh, living survivor of the Titanic. She's still alive. 
She lives in the United Kingdom.